At Two Rivers Public Charter School, we capture Jessica Prophet's fourth graders working with deep engagement for 80 minutes on a problem-based task in math. Ah, go. Okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna pass you out your PBT for today, and your first job is to read the learning targets and then to read the problem. A task helps a student to really grapple with some conceptual understanding in math. So instead of just practicing a procedure, they're really grappling with the ideas behind the math and wondering and figuring out for themselves why the math works. We start by reading the learning targets together. I can create multiple visual representations that show my thinking and explain my claim. Very nice. Chauncey, what are some visual representations? Like you said, like a model or like numbers or a claim that supports your answer. After reviewing the learning target for the lesson, Jessica begins by reading the problem aloud. One farming trick the Powhatans taught the English settlers was called companion planting. Right now in math, um, my students have just finished a unit on addition and subtraction, and we're moving into a unit on multiplication. One group of Powhatans planted 15 rows of three sisters' mounds, with each row containing six mounds. In today's problem, the kids were tasked with figuring out how many vegetables would be growing in a certain garden. If each mound produces two ears of corn, 20 bean pods, and nine squash, how many food items will you have when it's time to harvest? One of the key concepts of a problem-based task is that kids don't have a handy algorithm to go to to solve, so they have to figure out their own pathway to a solution um, so that they develop their own concept of the mathematics involved in the problem. I think to begin understanding the problem, everyone should read it by themselves for a little while and really think about what they're getting out of it. We use a thinking routine to unpack the problem called a KWI. First thing I do when I get a problem is read the learning targets, then start my KWI. K stands for I know, W stands for what we need to know, and I stand for ideas. Ah, go. Okay. All right, we're gonna come down to the floor when I call your table. You need to grab a clipboard when you come down. You need to bring your pencil and your KWI. There are three sisters, corn, beans, and squash. So after they've spent some time independently trying to understand the problem, then we come together as a community to try to really make sure we all understand that problem before we get started. Um, and this is really important because when students go off to problem solve, I don't want them grappling with what the problem is asking. I want them grappling with the math. So anyone have some ideas about how we might be able to solve this problem? Marco? Figure out how much one mounds all together. Figure out one mound and then figure out the total. Okay, let's stop there so we don't give too much of an idea. I really try to make sure that I hear or touch base with every kid before they start problem solving. And if they don't all have a place to start, I know who those kids are and those are the kids I need to check in with before they start problem solving. So today we're gonna work in partners and you're gonna choose your partner. And what are some things that we should remember? It's really important to me that my students can pick a strong partner. And so we really talk a lot about the kinds of questions that you should ask your partner before you select a partner. Like actually like make a picture of it. Yeah, we're good. That's what I'm working. Yeah, me too. Usually we pick partners by their ideas. My idea was to make a chart and actually make the farm, so is Taekwon's idea. And also sometimes my closest friends, they talk about other stuff, and Taekwon doesn't do that, he's just focused on the math. You gotta write the 15 caps? Okay. Yeah, because there's yeah. 15 rows. 14, 15. Okay, so now we have 15 rows. What is the next thing that it says? On a regular day when we're doing a math task, I give kids between 30 and 40 minutes to work on the actual problem solving of the task. And during that time, I see my role really as a facilitator. So I'm doing a lot of listening to the conversations that kids are having together and really thinking about the kinds of questions that I should be asking them in order to further their thinking. So did you figure out the amount of mounds? Times 15 times uh, 6. Okay, and why would you do that? Because, well, there's 15 and then there's 6. Okay, so let's do that and figure that out first. Finding the right problem is one of the hardest things to do when you're designing a task. You really have to know your students. And so I think today the task was at the right place for the goal that I had for them. They hit that point where they started to realize adding a number 31 times isn't going to really work for me all the time. And so I'm hoping that they're you know, really positioned for next week starting off on multiplication and really seeing that as the efficient way to do those bigger addition problems. So I love two representations and I'm going to share the first part and Taekwondo's going to share how we checked our work and 
So the first part, we did the corn, which... At the end of a task, we always save time for some students to share out their thinking about the task. Um, and that's really hard even for me as the teacher because sometimes when they're really almost very close to getting the answer, you want to give them more so time. C times six. But it's really important to carve out the time that they get to share their ideas because that helps the whole class come to a collective synthesis of the learning target. They got, what was your number? 192. 192. Did anyone else do a strategy similar to that? that I try to choose students to share that really highlight multiple stages of that learning target. So I'm not necessarily looking for the right answer, but I'm looking for creativity, potentially even highlighting some misconceptions that a lot of kids are having through that share and debrief. So we had to do 31 times 90. Questions or comments of, of things that either you did similar or that you did differently? We did a similar strategy, but we added up everything. We so what did you get when you multiplied that? 2,790. Okay, so your next step tomorrow might be to go back and check that multiplication. Before you leave the floor today, I want you to write down two things. Number one, what was the most interesting representation you saw today? And number two, What's the first thing you want to do when you go back to this problem tomorrow? My kids are able to stay engaged with math because our school has a culture of math and math is really seen by everyone in our school, the kids, the adults, and the parents as something that's fun and that they can do. Um, and we really emphasize that math is not something that you're doing to get the right answer. You're doing math because there's a lot of thinking involved in it. And I think the fact that they really love math and that they've had for many years a positive affect in their life towards math is, is one of the main reasons that they're able to persevere.